All right, Daniel, I'm afraid we have to do this. We've got to talk about United's performance against Bournemouth on Saturday. First, how are you? I'm all right, thank you. I have discovered, I've, I've discovered saunas. Uh, well, I haven't discovered them. I mean, I don't mean that in either uh, way yeah, where yeah. I've just learned about them or like, I, I'm, like I'm a Liverpool fan and I feel like I've just invented this thing that's already been invented. That's all I'm saying. I'm saying that my wife, over the last few years, I guess, is, uh, she is um, a woman of intense interest, shall we say. And in the last few, few years, like health, mental health has become one of them. And it turns out that if you have four to seven saunas a week, you've got a pretty good chance of staying alive for longer than you might have done otherwise and have much less chance of getting Alzheimer's. Okay. So, I mean, and I personally am very into these hacks that involve, that can help with longevity with minimum of effort. So I'm now having saunas every day. All right. I, I, for one, have, uh, maybe it's the British prude in me, never really found it that comfortable hanging around naked in a, you know, with a bunch of strangers, but, you know. But it's not, I mean, you're sitting there in your shorts. Yeah. You don't have to... I mean, I'm, you could if you wanted, obviously, presumably, but uh, maybe you couldn't actually. Yeah, you probably Hang couldn't. out with your, your but... tubby dangling there. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, find, I think this would actually, I think this would actually be against the rules. And um, when I advised one of my mates that I'd joined this place to go, he said when he was a member, the sauna was regularly getting closed because um, someone misunderstood what getting hot actually meant. Lovely. Yeah, I think that's yes. what the image I better have in there. my mind. Better there. Are you, are you doing more of the... Uh... Better there from the McFlurry machine. Yeah, well, yeah. Oh, God. What the fuck was that? a light falling over. Let me uh, I'll just do that. Yes, indeed. So are you doing the uh, um, Swedish Finnish, the Finnish style thing? Finnish. Then... Yeah. Finnish. Yeah, you got Finnish there, the plunge. Like, get cold, plunge in, plunge in some cold. 15 minutes. Yeah. Then... I wouldn't go straight into the plunge because that might give you a heart attack. I stand outside a few minutes, then into the plunge, then another 15 minutes. Other, uh, and another thing in this area is after you've eaten or from two hours after you've eaten, if you have, I have, I have water because obviously you can't drink this stuff by itself because it's too minging with a teaspoon of uh, cider vinegar and as much olive, as much extra virgin olive oil as I think I can drink. This, this too is apparently healthy and requires relatively low effort. So yeah, there's another one. Yes. The... Um, come and find me when we're all 700 years old and say thank you. Yeah. I might rely on technology. Uh, the, the side. And United are still shit. Exactly. 700 years time. Yeah. Uh, and Wayne Rooney Jr. and Jr. 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 is the manager. Yeah. All right. And Jordan, Hen Jordan Henderson's great, 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 great grandchildren don't have a job. <laughs> Everyone else, well, <laughs> everyone else has been replaced by AI. Uh, George and Henderson's great, 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 on the grand, goal. grandchildren may well be, a, a, you know, head of the house of Saud at that point. You never know. Fucking hell. All right. Oh, I feel like Joseph, basically. Jordan Henderson is Joseph. Well, apart from the bit that Joseph's the only guy in the Bible, that the only man that the Bible tells us was good looking. But, um, yeah, other than that. Uh, it's funny, in the, um... In uh, antiquity, a, a lot of Greek and Roman stories uh, do talk about how good-looking the characters. It's a big theme that goes through it. You know, the most beautiful woman. There are at least four most beautiful goddesses. And uh, there you go. I did not know Joseph was uh, the good-looking one. Uh, who's the good-looking one in the United side, then? Uh, was um, he any good? Well, it is Varan, I guess. Uh, he's for whatever, and you're not allowed to play anymore, so we have to make do with various other donkeys in his stead. I think one thing we should say is that three nil at home to Bournemouth, that could, he could have been four or five nil at home to Bournemouth, is not just a bad result. It is one of the worst results in United's post-war history. Yeah. On on the one hand. On the other hand, we are, you are now in a situation where everyone in the Premier League, almost everyone apart from the bottom three, is quite good. And they've got a good manager and it's now at the point where they're starting to understand what he wants from them. So they've got good recently. Yes. We, which begs a question. Yeah. yeah. Why, why does it take so <laughs> fucking long? Yeah. Yeah. It really does. 
We rather dismiss Bournemouth, or let's be more accurate, I rather dismiss Bournemouth on the last pod because I... No, no, I joined yeah. you. <laughs> and and actually, their recent form suggests that it, that it is starting to click, as you say, uh, and so they're better than perhaps we uh, gave them credit for. They are now sort of mid-table. Don't they have more points than Chelsea? Uh, so they were probably, one, they were probably slightly better than... We thought, but yes, I will join you in saying this is one of the most catastrophic results. And perhaps people aren't talking about it quite like that. It doesn't feel like the post-Newcastle hysteria or the post-Liverpool uh, or City smashings, unfortunately plural, on that hysteria. Well, we can, we can see next week, can't we? Yeah, well, we can see it's coming, yeah. So maybe <laughs> we're just waiting. But also, we've started to get used to it. And especially under this manager, we seem to get pummeled uh, every now and again. And it's one step forward and a couple dozen backwards. And that seems to have been what happens. I mean, I don't know how you go from a performance like the one against Chelsea, which was you know, intent. I, I mean, to be fair, they did give Chelsea a lot of chances in that game. But it was intense and they worked hard to the one against Bournemouth where they did not and it was not. And it's just such a I... big retrograde step. I, I watched Chelsea this time for work. And I mean, I knew at the time, Chelsea, I wrote on my notes when I was watching that game, Chelsea are dog shit. And we mustn't forget this. And Chelsea against Everton. Chelsea created, I think, one chance really right. in the game. Everton were, I thought Everton were more likely to get a second goal than Chelsea were to equalize. That's how shit Chelsea right. are. And so the fact that, I mean, I agree that we did put F in, but. Do you think that they thought, well, we've just smashed Chelsea 2 <laughs> 1? We'll easily, we'll easily have Bournemouth. We won't have to put effort in at the start of that game. Yeah. And this is one of the major problems because we're 10 off steam. Like, when you, when you, we've seen with crap United teams quite a lot that they could start okay. And then as soon as they get a minor setback, it goes to shit. But, when they when you don't even start well, then you've got massive problems, and it just some of the shit that went on yesterday. And I felt like maybe Newcastle would be that like the manager's line in the sand where he's saying, "I won't accept this bullshit anymore." But he then puts Martial back in, and I I understand that you can't. He doesn't want to play Hoyland in all the games, mate. But I think you might have to. Or I think we'd all rather see Rashford through the middle just because at least he's got some credit in the bank and something to actually play for. Yeah. Because he wants to play in the team. He's still got Martial knows ultimately that what's he doing at United? Not a lot. No, it's a waste of everyone's time uh, at this point. Although there was a story that came out saying they're considering triggering the one year extension in his contract. I mean, just fucking riot if that happens. As, 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 I'm triggered. Yeah, I'm triggered by the thought of that. That's just absolutely mental. That is Ed Woodward coming back from the grave, who goes to Christmas past to tell us our future, which is like you know, absolute bollocks. Uh, yeah, hopefully not. Marshalling the team, I can only think it's because Rashford in, is in such a poor state of form, mindset. That Ten Hag doesn't want him there. Oh, Grace in Graces. Yeah, I mean, who yeah, knows? Who knows? Yeah, and, if he's in... and Hoyland is not fit. Uh, he's had this back problem and they're trying to manage it. Because I, I, I couldn't remember whether he completed the full 90 at all this season, Hoyland. I don't think so, but I haven't. Um, I should go look it up on uh, FB Ref or something. But it feels like he hasn't completed a full <laughs> 90. And so I'm just wondering, he came into the season with his back injury. He's not fully fit. Amrabat spoke about it himself, that he wasn't fully fit. He's still kind of getting up to speed, and it shows it sometimes. He wasn't the worst defender yesterday. Um, and and then yesterday, to add to the kind of weird selection of Anthony Martial, you then had this kind of dance around at the back with Luke Shaw at centre-back, who had a bad game, honestly. I mean, he's normally done quite well there. Reguilón, who's no Luke Shaw at left-back, and this kind of weird double pivot of, well, single pivot of Amrabat and, and Scott McTominay bombing on and getting in Bruno's zone constantly. It's, it's just weird as fuck. There's no coherence to any of it. And he did that shuffle yesterday for some weird reason that I didn't understand at all. 
No, it's not easy to understand totally what the point, what, 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 what should this look like when it's going well? And it isn't clear. And I don't, I don't know what he's, what, 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 so what, what point is he trying to get to? Cause we have this McTominay paradox where he's the only one who can score, but he makes the team shit. I might yeah. score the only thing that makes it shit, but what, where are we trying to get to with this? At what point will he not be in the team anymore? And when, when, when will that be? Because that's obviously the vision. I didn't sign Mason Mount to play McTominay. And when, when can we start to move things on to try, to try and be good? And are we really going to be watching Harris Maguire play centre back for the rest of the season? I mean, it seems like it. Yeah. I mean, on, on McTominay. I would say it's some kind of short term, short term thing while he's waiting for Mount and, and, uh, Casemiro to be fit, I guess, or to fully trust Kobe Mainu. I, I don't know what's happened or Kobe Mainu, I should say. I'm not sure what's happened there. He had a good game against Everton and he's been out of the team ever since. So, um, something. Ten Hag doesn't trust it somehow, somehow. I don't know, but. But I, I can't well, see. I can't see the end state with Scott McTominay. He's obviously convinced himself that the trade-off of having a completely ineffectual midfielder is worth the occasional goal. So, and it, it seems to me, and you know, far, far be it me to criticise an actual football coach because you know I'm not. But it seems to me that you know he might score more goals with a functioning midfield than they do with McTominay now and again popping up for a goal. And I dare say concede fewer. Yeah, oh, for sure. There, yeah, for sure. <laughs> and it's kind of, I thought the Newcastle game was the game perhaps where he'd say, okay, enough, that this is what we're going to do now. We're going to try and do the thing that I want to do. I mean, but he's not doing it. We've got Bayern in midweek, going out, going out of the Champions League, and then we've got to go to Anfields. And I'd like to, what, what do we think? Like, what do you think his ideal midfield is? Of, of the teams that, of the players that he's got. Everyone fit. Everyone's, Every, everyone everyone's fit. Everyone's fit. What do I think he would do? I think he probably thought at the beginning of the season he would play Casemiro, Mountain, Bruno. I, I, I'm suspicious about whether there's any balance there. Because again. You know, we know already that's a load of bollocks. Yeah. That's bollocks. Uh, I I think if he if he really wanted to progress the midfield to something different, it would be my new Amrabat and Bruno. I think whatever happens, despite the criticism, you've got to play Bruno. He may be a chaos merchant, but he is uh, on like progressive passes, chances created, expected assists. He's way above everyone. Like uh, until you move to Wonderful. something different, he has to play. Because uh, every other formation, every other like variant of three in midfield is less creative. Uh, and well, also the thing with Bruno is it's true what you say about the chaos, but then get him on the ball in the right places. Yeah, but he can. Like last season, he did do some good work playing more of but as a box to box player, and he can do it because he can hit long passes and he can see the passes to hit, but. I thought like the idea for me of having say Mania and Casemiro or Mania and Amrabat is you can then have him near, near the box yeah. and it then becomes, it's not, he's not chaotic to the structure of the team at that point. He's just one of the people you're looking to get on the ball in dangerous areas. And then at that point you kind of have, you're allowed to sort of allowed to give it away. I mean, he, he is a knobhead for getting booked like that. Uh, yesterday, it's so dumb. Yesterday. So dumb. Yeah. And there was song, um, song was complaining to me that there was a point where he's rolling about on the floor because he doesn't get a free kick, born of counter and nearly score. You know, I get the ball back and he jumps up, but they can't play it forward because he's offside. <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah. Yeah. But yeah. The booking was I'm, infuriatingly dumb, totally unnecessary. He should have known. I think he probably did. If you see his reaction, exactly what he's done there. And uh, he was annoyed with the ref, I think, but really should be annoyed with himself because he did that. So, and to go with, by the way, who did he give the dumb free kick away against Galatasaray? 
uh, where he, he made the foul. Twice. Yeah, twice. Twice! <laughs> twice! <laughs> yeah. Uh, th- there is a lot of brain-deadedness in this uh, United team, unfortunately, that hasn't left. I-, I thought it might have, you know, some of it might have been removed. Chris Smalling, you know, a fine bloke and all, but um, one of the dumbest footballers But we'd get seen. into this team, Edward. <laughs> We would be an automatic selection in this team. He would be, yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, I like, I, I clearly, I'm struggling with the, I'm struggling with what Ten Hag is trying to do here. Uh, and it's certainly not all on him because there's a bunch of players who aren't, they shouldn't be good enough given the amount of money the United have spent over the last few years to get anywhere near this team. Um, but are in the team and our first picks. And for that's partly. Because he's like he's picking them when he doesn't have to. Yeah, he could easily have him. He's got him. It's Amrabat Mainu is Amrabat Mainu Bruno. No one would say what are you doing if he picked that midfield. In fact, for a, probably there, are, I don't know. I'm not sure that'd be my first choice midfield at this point because I just I don't feel like I see enough of Mount playing for United or enough of Amrabat just playing. Like I probably, if you push me, I'd probably go Mainu Casemiro over Bruno. But. He's got midfield that midfield available. And if you think about the changes, T is the one who's playing all the games. Finn Bruno basically playing every game. Yeah, and it, and it um, leads to the same thing every single time, which is a big gaping hole in United's midfield. And like particularly vulnerable on the counter. And we saw that a lot yesterday. But we also saw it against Everton, for example. Had 20-something shots Everton did. Uh, and we've seen it against Galatasaray, and we've seen it over and over again. Copenhagen, like teams just transitioning through United's midfield, it's completely open, and then the pressure is immediately on the centre backs. And you know, Harry Maguire yesterday made a couple of very good tackles, uh, but he's doing that because he's immediately he, under pressure. You know, <laughs> it's like desperate stuff. And also, the first goal, so, he loses his man. He does lose his man, and and uh, five foot. You've got two, one thing sure, to do. Sure, it, yeah. Apparently, Luke Shaw's like over six foot. I don't believe it. No, he's tall, Luke Shaw. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, I know you're not as tall as you, obviously, but but he is he is tall. Um, yeah, he was he was he was poor yesterday. But Maguire getting Player of the Month. I mean, what was that about? And that was kind of what we were saying in, on the midweek pod that there are just certain players that stuff to do with them attracts attention. So you leave Rashford out, you leave Maguire out, then people want to talk about it, which is not the case necessarily with other with other players. And Maguire suddenly had a couple of vaguely acceptable games against dog shit opposition. Yeah, I, was that that's Premier League only. So United only played three games, beat Luton, uh, Luton, Everton, and what was the other one? My, the, mm, uh, Luton, Everton, and one other. God, we're getting old. Uh, <laughs> Uh, it'll come to me in a minute. So it's three games with no goals conceded in the Premier League. But at the same time, they got smashed by Newcastle in the League Cup. Uh, they had a chaotic game in Copenhagen, which they lost. And they had that draw with Galatasaray, right? So it's not like the team manager of the month, like team of the month. It's not like United actually were actually playing well. It was actually really only one good performance that Everton won through that. And Harry, I guess there's a narrative building about how good he is, but I don't know. I think a lot of that's because when you make last ditch tackles and do stuff like that, because you know, they're so fucking. I open, wish he even did so. that. I, I, I wish he did make last ditch tackles, but he doesn't really. Um, and yeah, I mean, I feel like he needs to up his reiteration game this this next week because we're going to need I, it. I didn't see an apology post for from him. Did did I miss it? Was there one? So I I. I I, I don't know. I, they tried to make Bruno apologise on Match of the Day in the interview afterwards. Why? I uh, yeah. Well, he's he's not going to do that. I uh, I particularly like Harry's brand of apology post. So it's kind of snivelling and pathetic. <laughs> you know, it makes me feel good for a moment. So, <laughs> yeah. man. Uh, I mean, is there anything to say about the goals? Particularly, I mean, obviously the first one is I a did, mess. So, so. that's. Philip Billing. Yeah. Has Philip on the back of his shirt. Yes. Like, like he's Brazilian. Like anyone that is, like, even if you say Philip Billing, most people would tell you the fuck you're talking about. So, Philip, what? 
Uh, I don't know. Do you know the story behind that one? Is there a story? I don't know. It must be. Is it going to be like his rat Philip got run over in childhood? I thought you had to get now. special dispensation to have not your family name on there. I thought that was the point because otherwise they'd have all sorts of crap on there. Like dumb ballers would have, yeah, like all sorts of sheepy references. I thought you had to ask specifically. So for some reason, did you know, tangentially? I remember reading that when the players, whatever the game it was, I guess it was Call of Duty, maybe other than that. Um, probably more your department than mine. The players used to have a game together on which Vidic's screen name or whatever was Arkan. Oh dear. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, no need for the Googling there. Fucking hell. Uh, yeah. Uh, there's, um, yeah, I, I'm sure that's exactly why you have to, it has to be registered with the Premier League because there's someone checking that you're not like sticking Hitler on the back or some fucking nonsense because some dumb, dumb, dumb baller would do something like that. So anyway, I don't know why Philip Billing's doing that. There's probably some sad story or something, but, uh, uh, we should not be letting him score. But what about which is you don't need to have Hitler on the back because um, as um, we can just say, uh, what, what was was it Wayne Hennessy saying he was doing? Oh God, yeah, waving to his. I was friends. trying to make a Wayne Hennessy joke. Yeah, I couldn't remember what he said he was doing. He was, uh, yeah, he was waving to a friend or something like that, or waving to the cameraman. So. Waving, yeah, uh, Jesus. <clears throat> uh, I can't even remember the two of them were from headers, weren't they? So the sense he got the Philip, so Philip, so Filipino, um, yeah. scored a header. He basically got a run on intros. Yeah, yeah. the only man with about seventeen attackers. Yeah. And um, yeah, Philip Al, the clip vessel, plop plops a header. But I sort of wondered if another might have done better with, even though for sort for the sort of range of time to look at it, that he shouldn't have been able to get near it. It felt like he was trying to save something, but wasn't it? Yeah. It's quite really like, like he was flapping at something that just where the ball never was or wasn't going to, I don't know. Um, and the third one. Sensi oh, from the corner, stressed. I think, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 All of them a mess. So that, that's the yes, other thing Scott um, McTominay is supposed to give us height. So. I mean, I don't believe for a moment. I mean, you can't argue he does that. He does give you that, yeah. But so does Rafa Varane, who wins absolutely everything. And the reason that he's not in the team, we're supposed to be told, is that the passing lanes are better when you have a right footer on the right and a left footer on the left. And that's what Ten Hag wants. And therefore, Maguire's in form and therefore Varane's not in the team. But I just, I find it hard to believe in my naivety as just a football fan that five-time Champions League winner, World Cup winner, Rafa Varane, wouldn't be able to cope with playing on the left side of of uh, a central defensive partnership and having probably the best left-back in the league. Left-back, giving balance to your attack, might also give United more attacking positions. I don't know. So. It's, a, it's, a, it's a head scratcher. Um, I, I, I can't, I just, I can't abide Maguire and Lindelof anymore. We we just we know what what are we waiting to find out and I don't know if they get I, to their four hundred games know. together it might click you know you never know so yeah I I just felt like if we'd have had um, if we'd have had Veran we might we might have got out of that Galatasaray game with a win and we're about to play Bayern Munich you know? it just the mind boggles it really it really does and. Yeah, unless if he's been Billy Big Brother trying to force the manager that is trying to force Varane out now so that he can get someone who will be fit, who will be part of the team going forward. Okay, he doesn't need to do Let's this see. to do it. Definitely doesn't need to cut his nose off to spite his face. He can just say, "Hey, well, he might, so. he might, yeah. because Varane's not playing." I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I'm totally hypothesising. Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying that. The way you force someone out isn't by picking them and then saying you mind nipping off and by making it so that they have to go. I don't I don't know that's what he's doing, but maybe that's what he's doing, and then we we go and get Varan's replacement. I mean, I, I'm sure the idea originally was to get Varan's replacement while you've still got Varan. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, I mean, like, they bring someone better. That's always great. I don't trust 
United whatsoever to do these deals, right? Because they've proven over and over again that they they have no long term vision or plan. Now, maybe let's just speculate, and it's really like route one speculation that it is Jean Claude Tudibo, who's you know obviously at our soon to be partner club, uh, and whose metrics are off the scale, right? I haven't seen much of him live, um, but uh, you know, hey. If you're a stats nerd, then it looks great on square paper. Exactly, he really looks good there. In actual football terms, not quite so sure, but you'd hope there'd be some people with the new ownership who may be quite close to that. <laughs> so maybe, maybe that's the answer. Who knows? I don't know. It, it is, then, it is weird though. What has happened? He's suddenly disappeared out of the team and can't get anywhere near it. And we're playing a left back. We're playing Sergio Reggion ahead of him, effectively. So. Tottenham's third he's choice left back. He is. Yeah, he's not good. I mean, he's someone who looks like he could be good, but just every time he gets into a good position, he makes the balls up yeah. of it. Yeah, and just he doesn't, he's not able to just do that thing that you have to do. Yeah, yeah. Oh, dear me. He did overlap well, so he did get into some good positions. I mean, Bournemouth also played it quite narrow, so they played narrow and broke, which, which, which squeezed McTominay and Bruno all into one zone. Like they knew what they were doing defensively, Bournemouth. You could actually see that they had a plan to to cope with the few strengths that United have, um, because they know Anthony is never going to go on the outside. He did once actually. The crowd got all excited. He beat a man uh, and then fell over rather theatrically. Uh, but he almost yeah, never I mean, does it. So everyone squeezed into this tiny area. Not not a surprise. United created hardly any chances. So again, that's just me. A football fan, not a coach, going. This looks rather obvious. Why isn't Ten Hag doing something about this? Well, well, there's always there's always that thing that we cannot know, which is the disconnect or the difference between what he's telling them to do and what they're doing. And obviously, his job is to get them doing what he's telling them to do. So yeah. them not doing that also reflects on him. But mainly, you got to play. You got to take responsibility if you're an adult. Take responsibility if yourself and. They're not, and I think I said this on Thursday, but part of me is still sort of, well, I'll just get rid of almost all of them and just start again. But then I think, well, I don't feel backing the manager would be helpful at this point. No, it's even though another part cycle, of me, so it's... So even though part of me wonders, a large part of me wonders if it's too far gone already. 11 defeats. For either him, so it's, it's for be him close. either... For, yeah, either for him to turn it around, yeah. or maybe what we've seen tells us that he's not good enough. Well, at some point, if it continues like this, so we're not at the halfway stage of the season, we've lost 11 times. Obviously, there's going to be fewer opportunities to lose that many in the second half of the season, because we're not going to be in as many competitions. <laughs> but um, if if you get to the end of the season, you've lost more than 20 times, you'll have burnt all his credibility. You know, the one thing I'd say, I, I think I said it, last week was uh, with new management coming in even if they had some kind of from a distance faith in him uh, that is a very obvious point to sort of start the cycle again I mean the reason why I, I I'm not like fully on Ten Hag out this guy hasn't got it he's an idiot like uh, but part of it is we're only 18 months in are we going to start again for the sixth time post Fergie um, but a lot of it is that starting again from this point with United's finances having like financed four hundred million pounds worth of signings and it actually in quite a tight position, um, like you're not gonna be able to give the new man, whoever it may be, that kind of backing again. Um and unless we really believe in the new management structure, which, you know, hey, who knows? We haven't seen it yet. Um, would we trust the club to get it right? I like, haven't got anything right for the last ten years. <laughs> like, list the 70 something players that United have bought post Fergie. And there's, I bet there's less than a handful who are actually good, who've actually proven themselves to be good and you trust, you know? Who are? It's, uh, who are, who are, I'm not sure. Put, pick them, name them. So, yeah, the, the one, there's only, of all the players signed post, he really like this is the only one. Unquestionably, yeah. Something. And people will still question him, but yeah. that is about it. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's phenomenal, especially when you consider that there was a pro forma that already existed at United of how not to do this. 
And yet they somehow went and did it again. Yeah. And history repeats. I, f- I think my problem with Ten Huff now, it's not so much where we find ourselves because I am prepared to be patient to let him see. And we haven't, he hasn't had, he hasn't ever, I don't think, been able to pick what he thinks is his first 11. And this season, he hasn't had his first choice back for at all. So I am willing to give him some time and space to, for that, for those things to change. What I'm finding difficult is just within that, it shouldn't look like this. We're seeing other managers like Iraola, like Poster Coglu, like Edward fucking Howe, um, Emery, make him look a bit of a tip if we're being brutal. Yeah, I mean, there's questions about because this, this, like Newcastle's form this season has been mixed. Poster Coglu obviously spurs, as soon as the injuries hit, their squad is too thin and it's fallen off a cliff. So there's question marks there. But Emery, with fewer resources, and no, no. has done a... Uh, yeah. And not, Emery had. Emery had a good team. Yeah. He had a really good team, squad of players. The idiot that had it before him didn't know what to do with. They couldn't, they couldn't work it out. So what I don't think... And I think the thing with Newcastle is it's fine that the form has been mixed. No, that's not unexpected. Champions League's relatively small-ish squad of good players. But when you watch them play, even when they're not playing well, it looks like it's meant to look. It looks like something. And that isn't the case with Ten Huff. And it, is, we, it isn't the case because he's picking a team that won't allow it to be any different to that. And that makes it hard to believe in him. Because what we're seeing now is so far away from what we want to see, but also probably from what he wants to see. And it feels like, is, are you bottling this in real time? Are we watching you just forget what you're trying to do, try and get the results to stay afloat? Well, that's definitely what he's doing. He's, I mean, he, he bends to us the more pragmatic than philosophic, I think, more than I thought. Uh, but yes, he's, he's under a massive amount of pressure. He knows that his job must be on the line. He's intelligent enough to realize new management coming in that is often curtains for a, for a manager. Uh, and he's just trying to get short term results. That's the only explanation for the amount of chopping and changing and McTominay in our midfield, right? That is, it's, you can't believe that. Yes, I'm going to turn this into IX 2019 with Scott McTominay in midfield. He doesn't. So, so, so when. So, but when, when does it get to be good then? When do we, in his mind, at what point does it get, what are we waiting for to happen for it to be allowed to be good? Well, he said, and incidentally, it should still not be this shit, even Tom and the team. Yeah, no, it shouldn't be. Uh, he said in midweek that uh, the team aren't good enough to be consistent. So it's just, it's just the thing is, there's a lot of his players in Villa. there. There's a lot of his players in there. And the, so. And there's a lot of consistency. So you could, what you could say, what is what he wants? So fucking complex, intricate that it can only be achieved when he's got a player, a high level player that he wants in every position. Whereas what Postacoglu and Emery and those guys are asking can be done, can be achieved by mere by mere mortals. I don't know, like fucking Pedro Porro or whoever. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I, it just, it doesn't bear much scrutiny. No, it doesn't. I mean, it's quite and easy I to pick apart that narrative. If if we were to try and defend Ten Hag, it's very, very hard, right? You know, so... The, no, I don't the, agree. So that I don't agree with. I think it's really easy to criticise him. And I, th- I'm, I think it's also really easy to defend him. Because he's always... Every man should have to depend for the Glazers. True. But um, didn't want it to look like this. And um, the injuries also. How are you meant to judge? I sign Mason Mount. We think he's the wrong player, but he's had three injuries since December. Yeah. So we don't know. Amrabat turns up, he's not fit. Yeah. No Hoyland turns up, he's injured. Yeah. And obviously he signed these people injured, but he's not signing them for now. We're supposed to be adults about yeah, this yeah. and say, okay, you're signing Hoyland because you want him for the next decade. We're not going to get on your ass if it's a slow start to the season. Because he's not fit and he's getting used to things. Because we we can see he's good and we can. Yeah. We can see that Hoyland can play. It could go on to be good. So then us 
judging the manager who clearly wanted another centre forward, experienced centre forward, and didn't get one. He wanted rid of Maguire. He wanted rid of McTominay. And now, look, so the things I criticise, I criticise him for giving Dallow a deal. Well, that was ridiculous behaviour, especially if you're keeping one Bissaka. But, I mean, oh, no, no. That looks, that looks like the manager's, definitely the manager's signing, and obviously he looks rubbish. And that one we could blame him for, I guess. Because, I mean, it's weird, because uh, maybe this was lost in translation, but he said that Onana was masterful. And to me, even when it's going well, he's at his best, you could be, say, he's effective. Generally masterful or masterful against it's Bournemouth? Not... What was the context of the statement? The... No, no, generally, generally, right. he said Onana, Onana was a masterful goalkeeper. Yeah. Uh, he's not the master of jack shit. Yeah. He might, he might sometimes be effective, but, I mean, I, the first couple of errors didn't worry me too much because I was willing to accept that a new goalkeeper might make some mistakes early doors. But having now seen more or less half a season of him, now understanding that the errors that I saw a really manifestation of the way the careless, yeah. haphazard That's his manner in which he yeah. keeps goal. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I'm not going to write him off. I'm not going to write him off right now. But I'm not. Hope- I don't. I don't feel hopeful with it. No, but but it, it extends the, the you know the questionable decisions on transfers extend, and it's not just him. By the way, of course we have you know we have Murtar. And O'Brien and the whole scouting team there. So it's not just on Ten Hag, but it feels like a lot of this is what he wanted, right? So he's not picking the numbers, but he's intelligent enough to know that if you spunk 100 million euros, 80 million quid on Anthony, who had zero output in the Eredivisie uh, and has zero output in the Premier League, then there'll be consequences for what you can do with the rest of the team, right? So there's Anana. Huge fee for a player who was a free the year before. Mount, huge fee for a player who had one year left on his contract. Anthony, astronomical fee for a player who has zero output. Like, it's not going to change now. This is the player he is. Uh, Casemiro looked like he was physically fading. We said it when he joined. Like, good short-term, worry about the long-term. The long-term came at us faster than we hoped or wanted. Sorry. Um, so there's lots of question marks, and and of course Ten Hag is um is a uh, you can defend him on some of that. Casemiro was not the player he wanted, for sure. He wanted Frankie De Jong for the the ball carrying and the transition from defence to midfield, of course. But he said yes on a very very different profile of player, uh, and uh, and knowing what that kind of size of fee would do to United's you know, his ability to then spend money elsewhere, he said yes on Mason Mount. I can't, for the life of me, can't even like rationalize a reason, but there's something there that they were thinking about. Um, so, you know, he, he, <laughs> he's cut. There's something there that they were thinking about. I mean, it's like, uh, I don't know. I, <laughs> there, there, there are strings of WhatsApps, um, uh, in what, uh, you know, of course, like, you know, like you, yeah, I'm in a bunch of WhatsApp groups with football supporting mates with me watching England going, what the fuck is this guy? Over and over again, like until I'm, fun- yeah, anyway. Are you typing that in American accent? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> this guy is no good at kickball. I can't do an American accent, so. Yeah, yeah it's, I mean, I, 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 I agree that, um, yeah, and I mean, I think in retrospect, I, I don't think Anthony was as bad as people said he was. Keep saying this. Someone should have put their foot down about Anthony, really, and said, what are you talking about? There's nothing. That makes it makes it suggest Rashad's just saw sort the of, yeah, Spurs three Newcastle nil. Wow, Eddie Howe for the chop. I would. Yeah, I mean, not a I mean, single point, tear will come down my face when Eddie Howe gets the sack. I wish him to be thoroughly humiliated. Oh, I thought you meant like for the for the chopping literal up. chop. Yeah, well, maybe. I mean, who knows? I, I wouldn't. Yeah, it's not visit an embassy anytime soon, Eddie. Um, but uh, but yeah, I I will be delighted when he finally goes because it's inevitable at some point. But yeah. Anyway, Ten Hag so I is, think... yeah, I like it. Um, I mean, the, the defense of him is that last season was a big progression on the year before. 
and that we had some kind of signposting of what kind of team he wanted to produce. We weren't, we didn't think that it was the final shape of it by any means, but we got a trophy. We got a, a strong position in the league, a FA Cup final. You know, that's, it was a good first year, wasn't it? Right. That's the defense of him that we could somehow see. He's been strong with, he's been clear, at least in the place he wants out. He's not actually been able to achieve all of that. Um, I don't know whether that's on him, really. Um, he made some like clear decisions on Ronaldo. You know, I guess some of this is good, right? That's the defense of him. The negatives are piling up, though, aren't they? And I think they're probably higher than the positive pile at this stage. I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say that because he won a trophy. And so it will take a lot to detract from that. But there haven't been many positives this season, many situations where he's done something different that's worked or done changed the game from the bench or anything like that. I mean, all that's really happened is Scott Tomlin started scoring goals, and that's not even a good thing. Um, so, yeah, he's not he's not having any kind of impact at the moment. But then you keep thinking, well, at some point he's just going to pick a slightly different team and stick to it. Yeah, and he doesn't. I, um, I don't. Yeah, I know. I, I don't want to judge him until I've seen Martinez back. Sure, Martinez and Shaw are in the team, and Casemiro and Maynou and Bruno, and then Hoyland with two wingers. But it would be, oh my gosh, four of those. Oh, that means the wipes. Sorry, no one was. It would be common <laughs> fading like all of a sudden on Saturday. Go on, g- uh, give, uh, it, give us your best Drury impression. Yeah, yeah. Go on, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, um, so, and I just, I think I lose patience with managers. I want the managers post Fergie. I've wanted them gone when I've lost hope that they have the ability to make it better than it is. I don't feel like that. I don't even feel that we're that close to that. Yeah. Now. Yeah. But I just, I'd like him to just draw. I just like him to say, right, this is, that was then and this is now, which is a very famous phrase in psychotherapy. A particular favorite of someone who there's a, a doc, Dr. Shafali Savari. If any of you are interested in, I mean, it's mainly like your know, main thing is parenting. And I wasn't, I'm not, I'm not a self help person particularly, but her books on parenting are excellent and I found very helpful with parenting. If anyone wants to go, wants to go and investigate that. But one of the phrases she constantly uses, and I think about it a lot, is that was then this is because you just, any circumstance you're in, you can bring a whole bunch of irritating shit to it, or you cannot. And yeah, I just, I'd like him to, that was then and this is now this whole situation. And, but just retain all his grudges and say, right, this is the team that I, this is the team that's gonna, the nucleus of my team for the next two years. And I'm gonna let them play. Yeah. Yeah. Now I get, I get what you mean. Uh, my, my wife likes uh, parenting books as well. And she tells me, um, because it's one she read that uh, I should regulate my emotions with the kids when they uh, drive my anger induced rage <laughs> uh, because they uh, won't get ready in the morning, and get to school on time or something like that. And I was not able to regulate my emotions <laughs> with these fuckers yesterday. Uh, and they drive me fucking wild too. I, I do get what you mean exactly about he should decide what his team looks like. And, and stick to it. And that's the, that's the thing about, I want my team to play a certain way. I want the kind of shape. I'm going to do the best I can to stick to the plan, even though I've got injuries um, and there's challenges at the moment. And that's what Poster Cogler at Spurs has done, which is say, I'm going to stick to the plan, even though I've got some injuries. And it's not, it's, you know, the, the results turned down. Yeah, as, the plan is the plan. The plan is the plan. And Ten Hag has not done that. And he's, he's much more like Mourinho. In that he's like, well, here's the plan for this game, and then here's the plan for this game, right? And there doesn't appear to be an end state. And when, and and like that all gets distilled down to people talking about, I don't know what the identity of this team is, right? And it's shorthand for that thing, which is United do not have a defined way of playing, other than it's some form of possession dominance. Um, we are not that good on the transitions, despite Ten Hag wanting us to be the quote unquote 
best transition We're team in the world. We're quite good. We're very, very We're quite good at winning, winning it high. high. Quite good at winning it high. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. I mean, but not good at them doing anything with them. High. You know, there's two different things. Yeah. I mean, yes, we do produce a lot of turnovers. That has got a lot better. The coordinated press is better. It's not infallible because people do beat that press quite often and they were completely open. Um, but it is, it is producing a lot of turnovers. But um, it's producing then shots from range, not a lot of high probability chance creation, sadly. I mean, three shots on target yesterday. Um, and not all of that was that it was poor finishing from good positions. In fact, most of it wasn't. So, you know, that, that is about <laughs> it. Uh, and, and, and so those are the things that worry me. It's like 18 months into the Ten Hard project and, and we're still like, oh, so what we're really hoping for is that the players that are injured are coming back. We're not going to do any business in the, in the winter. So, so then he'll be able to instill whatever it is and we'll have a stronger end to the season by which time we'll be out of the Champions League and, um, out of the League Cup and chasing fourth place, which fortunately there's a lot of other inconsistent teams as well. So fourth place will be competitive, but possible. Um, and, and that's it. And then we're going to roll over to the third season and hope it all comes together then. Right. That, that's the, that's the sunny picture. I think is that that happens. Like we can't hope for better, um, than that right now. And so. Then we're hoping for by the end of Ten Hag's third season, May, June 2025, that we're what? Are we close to a title challenge at that point? It's kind of hard to see it from here, isn't it? So, Yeah, I mean, I, I, I guess I have hoped that we'd see some kind of challenge next season. But in the back of my mind, I thought if we got a good start, we might be able to at least stick with the teams at the top for a little while. <laughs> What's the twelve? Uh, well, we are we are only so, three points behind. No, no, it's six now, isn't it? I was going to say we start the weekend three points behind City, but yeah, it's now back to yeah, 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 that's, yeah not no more. Um, All right, shall we? Shall we talk a little bit about Bayern? Yes, let's do that. You're banging a lot. Sorry. Yeah. Um, I so Bayern. I I don't not fancy us to win that. I <laughs> come on, let, let's hear the uh, theory of the case here. Like, yeah, because part of the problem with these dickheads is, is effort and intensity. Yeah, I don't think that a home game in the Champions League against Bayern Munich, they're going to start the game like they're a Mogadon. I just, I don't, I don't think that's going to happen. So at that, at that point becomes about can we get the first goal because if we can the players that we have on the counter just the attacking players that we have in general able to hurt any team um it's more about what happens when things if things don't go according to plan or our ability just to hand over goals or not bother taking very easy chances although it'd be nice to create some i i i would have quite fancied us to qualify if there were two out of the three results in the other match would qualify us. But hoping for a draw and for us to beat Bayern obviously feels like a bag of bollocks. Yeah, it does. I mean, Bayern got smashed over the weekend. So maybe there's some hope. I don't know whether that's good for us or not, really. Because I, I don't think that's good for it's us. It's probably not because Tuchel might have been looking at this as a dead rubber. But it's Bayern. Yeah, rest, rest some players. Yeah, it's Bayern and you really can't have two bad results without... Both, both the fans, the media, but also the buying board, you know, getting tetchy about it. Um, and then being second in the Bundesliga, four points behind Leverkusen, uh, like that is enough to get any buying manager sacked, basically. But also, yeah, chucking, a, chucking away a Champions League result. I mean, they have qualified. There's nothing on it, riding on it for them. But yes, I wonder whether they will want to come back and Tuchel will be feeling under some pressure. Yeah, it's this. I don't feel like it's good for us. It probably mean, makes it means it's more likely you'll pick a full strength team or a stronger team because they want a result. But we need a result. So there it is. Um, it's a real, like, it's extremely aggravating to be going out of Champions League like this. Like, the group is as low quality as this. Um, 
This one, I mean, is mainly another one, isn't it? This one. Goal against Bayern, at least one of the goals against Galatasaray at home, the two goals against Galatasaray away. Yeah. Can't remember what happened with the four. We managed to to fucking Copenhagen, but that felt more like it was a Maguire, Varane situation. Yeah, that was a midfield problem. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a pisser because I mean, I don't want us to get hammered by a better team, but I genuinely don't think there are that many teams in the Champions League that are capable of hammering us if we're in good form. Yes. Um, yes. Uh, I, I mean, this buying team probably are. I mean, I, I don't know how a, a team with, I mean, you look at their back five plus the two sitting in front of them. I don't know how that team concedes five goals, which is what they did yesterday. Uh, pretty nutty, honestly. They must have all had a day off. Um, but there's a lot of quality in that team just on paper. Obviously, it's not all like kind of clicked this season. Tuchel is unhappy with that midfield balance. You know, Kane has obviously scored a bucket load of goals. He was always going to. But the thing that like Tuchel's not happy with is like his his number ten. Right, he's been trying to phase the Muller out and and the balance of Kimmich and Goretzka in midfield, which to my eyes looks like. A very solid double pivot, but to Tuchel's does not it's stop. So, yeah, yeah, and it's. I mean, I love Goretzka. I mean, I, I think that Kimmich is sort of one of those players who is brilliant because he can play those positions. He's not quite brilliant in any of them. Goretzka probably the injuries have limited how good he was going to be. He's sort of, sort of getting to the point where United probably signed him. Yeah, yeah, we have been d- dumping ground for uh, Bayern's cast offs, haven't we? Uh, yeah, but the, yeah, the defense isn't that good at all. Um, I mean, Musiala obviously is a really very serious player. Yeah, and I is, um, is he fit? Because he didn't play at the weekend. Is he? Do they just rest? I him? mean, I, uh, I, but surely they can't be resting him for us. No, he came on. Sorry, I'm just looking at it now. He 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 came on. So yeah, no, I'm, I assume you'll play. So he'll come back in as a team. I mean, they have they have missed Delit. Uh, I guess Kim and Jay had a great season last season with with uh, Napoli. It hasn't been as solid this season. Upa Meccano is like one of those players that feels great sometimes and not always. So Noya's there's, just there's come back into the team. So yeah, there's there there definitely is. We're talking our way into a United could do something here. Um, but yeah, like so there's there's definitely... I think we know that they can. We know that they can. They probably won't. Um, but I just, I can't bear another Europa thing. I'm actually, I'm taking, I'm going on, on one Tuesday because like two of my best mates, their son is a United fan. I promised him I'd take him to a game for his bar mitzvah, which was in the summer. So he was like, which one do you want to go to? So this is the one he picked, which is actually quite interesting because it, it's, it, I guess it's branding. Because even after the Galatasaray game, I said, do what you want, but if you want to go to Chelsea instead, we can do that. And he didn't. He wants to, I guess he wants to hear the music. Yep. I don't, uh, I mean, yeah. it is great. I mean, I, I say it is the music. I mean, for what we say about you make around the Champions League, when you hear that music, you know something's happening. It is, it is great. I was surprised because it was just as a United supporter myself. Like I, I, haven't, I haven't been so I can't remember the last yeah. time in Old Trafford. Yeah, because um, I, I stopped going in '05, and then I mean I've been on freebies a few times since then, but I haven't been probably for a decade. Um, but I would have picked Chelsea, not Bayern. But um, well, yeah, I hope he enjoys it. Uh, and- but he's got to spend the day with me. So I, I guess it's a bit screwed. Yeah, bonus, bonus. The uh, I guess the question, like on the musical theme, you know, what point does the fat lady sing for Ten Hag who will get smashed by Bayern, Liverpool, uh, and Liverpool. West Ham, and Villa? Those are the those are, we could lose. Uh, the West Ham away, you're like okay, mixed bag there from the Moisaya. The the other games look incredibly different. West Ham right was five nils for Did they? I believe so. Four yeah, five, I can't five remember, yeah, just yeah. got proper clap the clap before them. But yeah, I mean if we if you lost the if we lost the next four, 
then yeah, it's, it's, it's in big, big trouble. I hope that doesn't happen, as I said. Not because this is not a case where, the back of my mind, I'm semi, not wanting United, not wanting United to get beat, but don't exactly mind that much if they do, because I know that it's not going anywhere under this manager. I mean, I have strong suspicions it's not going anywhere under this manager, but yeah, I still, I still want him. I still want him to get a good go at it, and I want to. I do want to see him with his team, but mm. he just has to make what United do be what United do, not what United do with every country he wants to pick and play. Do. Well, yeah, and it would it would make me feel a lot better being reductive if he had some riz about him, and he doesn't, and like he's not an inspirational guy at all, and so he's not bringing us along for the ride. So it has to be the it has to be the results. So. Yeah, and that's it. Like that's, and that's one of the things we're seeing with Buster Copley. Like he's telling his players that they can, and Ten Hag is tacitly telling them that he doesn't think they can. Well, he's absolutely telling them he doesn't think they can. He said they're not good enough. So, uh, yeah, but, true that. Yeah, I know. Uh, and he's uh, he's he's done a Mourinho with half the team. So except the rapists and the wife beaters, <laughs> who he's big fans of. So. I mean, yeah. Oh. All right. Thank you very much, everyone. Good luck. Good luck, United. Good luck, Eric. We're going to need it. Uh, we'll catch you after buying. Oh, can we do a beseech on the uh, YouTube channel? Yes. All of you friends of um, the pod. Obviously, you don't need to watch us on YouTube if you don't like looking at us. And frankly, we understand. But if you could all just subscribe. It would be effectively, I think, nothing to <laughs> your life. It would just be something appearing on your home screen every now and again. But it would enable us to keep doing these for free. So yeah. we appreciate you. And if you could help us out just by ticket subscribe on YouTube, then, uh, yeah. Very good. Thank you. Please do that uh, and enjoy it. These videos do go up there. Uh, and you can see Daniel... Horizontal order. and me leaning into the microphone. Uh, broadcasters, we are not. But uh, yeah, thanks for that. Catch you later.